Chapter One, Introduction, Meet Your Teacher. Hi, I am Freya, your English teacher, and today I am going to talk about something very special, my secret to learning English. But before I reveal that, let me ask you, are you ready to start your journey toward mastering English? If you are, this is the perfect place to begin. Learning English can seem like a big challenge. You might feel a little scared or even worried that it's too difficult. But guess what? By the end of this podcast, you will feel excited and confident because I'm going to share some simple, easy steps that will help you improve your English. These steps worked for me and they can work for you too. So how do you learn English? Let me give you a hint. It's not just about studying grammar or memorizing words. It's about something much more interesting and we'll talk about it very soon. But first, I want to let you in on a secret. The real key to learning English is about taking small steps every day. You don't have to be perfect, you just have to practice. Sounds easy, right? Now, before we dive into the secret, let me share a little story. When I first started learning English, I thought, I'll never be able to speak fluently. But then I realized that everyone who is good at English started as a beginner, just like you. It takes time and patience. But the best part is you don't have to do it alone. I am here with you step by step. Together, we're going to make this fun and exciting. Learning is a treasure that will follow its owner everywhere. This is a famous Chinese proverb, and it's so true. When you learn English, you open the door to new opportunities. You can travel, meet new people, and understand different cultures. English is the key to so many things, and today you've already taken the first step by listening to this podcast. In the upcoming chapters, we're going to talk about some powerful techniques, how to read, listen, speak, and write in English like a pro. I will also share some of my favorite quotes from famous people who have inspired millions of English learners. Are you excited? I know I am. But before we get there, I want to remind you of something very important. Don't rush. Learning English is a journey, not a race. You don't have to be perfect. You don't need to know everything at once. Start small. Just listening to this podcast is a great start. The secret that I'm about to share with you isn't complicated, and it doesn't require anything fancy. In fact, it's very simple, but trust me, it's powerful. You'll soon see that English is not just something you study. It's something you live and experience every day. Are you ready to discover what's next? Stay with me because in the next chapter, we will unlock the first part of the secret, how to use reading to become fluent in English. This is one of the most powerful ways to improve your English skills, and I'll tell you exactly how I did it. Chapter two, the power of reading. Welcome back. In the last chapter, we started our journey together. 
Now, let's dive into the first part of my secret. Reading. Yes, reading is one of the most powerful tools you have to learn English faster than you ever imagined. But it's not just any reading. There are special ways to make it work for you. When I first started learning English, I wasn't sure where to begin. I thought reading would be too difficult, especially with all those new words. But then I realized something magical. Reading is like opening a door. Every time you read something, you step into a new world where English becomes more familiar to you. And guess what? The more you read, the easier it gets. You don't have to start with big books or long articles. Start with something simple, just like what we're doing right now. Choose books that interest you, even if they are for kids or beginners. These books have shorter sentences and easy words, but they teach you so much about English. The important thing is to enjoy it. When you enjoy what you're reading, learning becomes fun. Now, let me tell you about a special technique called shadowing. It's simple, but very effective. While you read, try to repeat the sentences out loud. Imagine you're a shadow copying every word, every sound, and every tone. By doing this, you'll improve not only your reading skills, but also your speaking and pronunciation. You'll feel more confident with every page you turn. It's like having a conversation with a book. There's also another technique I love, reading aloud. When you read aloud, you hear yourself speaking English. It helps you learn how the words flow together. This is a great way to get used to the sound of English and train your brain to think in English. Plus, it's fun. You can pretend you're telling a story or giving a speech. It's your moment to shine. And remember, you don't need to understand every single word. It's okay if you come across words you don't know. Just keep reading. You'll understand the meaning through the context. And over time, you'll naturally learn more words. Don't worry if it's not perfect. Like I said before, it's about progress, not perfection. Here's something to keep in mind. The more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. These wise words from Dr. Seuss remind us that reading opens doors to new possibilities. The more you read, the more confident you become in English. You'll start to notice new words, phrases, and sentence structures. It's like collecting little pieces of English every time you read. Now, let me tell you how I used reading to improve my own English. I started with short, simple stories, just like the ones you can find on my YouTube channel. Little by little, I moved on to slightly longer texts, but I never rushed. I allowed myself to enjoy the process. That's what I want you to do too. Enjoy reading, because when you enjoy it, you'll stick with it. And before you know it, you'll be reading longer, more complex texts with ease. I've uploaded podcasts that can help you with reading techniques like these. 
You can listen and follow along as I guide you through stories, and you can even try the shadowing technique with me. Make sure to check them out. They'll give you the extra boost you need to become a better reader. Here's a challenge for you. Pick up something simple to read today. It could be a short story, a news article, or even a blog post. Rate it aloud, shadow it, enjoy it. And remember, every time you read, you're getting one step closer to mastering English. In the next chapter, we're going to talk about another secret that will change the way you learn English forever, listening. But for now, keep reading, keep shadowing, and most importantly, keep having fun with it. Chapter 3. Listen Like a Native. Welcome back! So far, we've explored the power of reading and how it can open doors to your English learning. Now, it's time to unlock the next part of my secret, listening. Before you can speak like a native, you must first learn how to listen like one. Listening is a powerful tool that will help you understand not only the words, but also the rhythm, tone, and emotion behind English. When I first started learning English, listening was a bit tricky for me. At first, everything sounded so fast and I couldn't catch all the words. But then, I discovered that listening is like music. You need to feel it, not just hear it. Every language has its own melody and English is no different. Let me share a technique with you that will make listening much easier and fun. It's called active listening. This means you're not just hearing words, you're paying attention to how they are spoken. When you listen actively, you focus on the pronunciation, tone, and pace of the speaker. You'll start to notice how native speakers stress certain words, where they pause, and how their voices go up and down. This is super important because it helps you sound more natural when you speak. Another technique is listening to slow audio. Start with audio that's spoken slowly, like podcasts or videos made for English learners. On my YouTube channel, I have podcasts designed specifically for beginners like you. You can use them to practice. The slow pace gives you time to catch each word and understand its meaning. As you get more comfortable, you can gradually move on to faster audio, like regular conversations, movies, or songs. Now, here's a fun secret that helped me. Listen to English every day, even if it's just for a few minutes. You can listen to podcasts, songs, or even the news. The more you listen, the more familiar the language will become. Your brain will start to recognize common patterns and phrases, and soon you'll understand English without even realizing it. Consistency is key here. Just like when you're learning to play a musical instrument, practice makes perfect. The first problem for all of us, men and women, is not to learn, but to unlearn. These wise words from Gloria Steinem remind us that sometimes to learn something new, we have to let go of old habits. When it comes to listening, try not to translate every word into your native language. 
This was one of the hardest things for me to stop doing. But once I learned to listen for the meaning, instead of focusing on individual words, my understanding of English improved dramatically. Here's a great way to practice. Shadowing. We talked about shadowing in the reading chapter, but it's even more powerful when you combine it with listening. Find an audio or podcast, like the ones I've uploaded on my channel. Listen to it carefully and then try to repeat what you hear. Don't worry if you don't catch every word at first. Just focus on getting the rhythm and tone right. Over time, you'll get better and better, and your pronunciation will improve too. Listening to music is also a fun and easy way to get better at English. Songs have a natural flow, and the repetition of lyrics helps you memorize new words. Plus, music helps you understand the emotion behind the language, which is important for sounding natural when you speak. Try singing along to your favorite English songs. It's a fun way to practice. Now, you might be wondering, how long do I need to practice listening each day? The answer is, as much as you can, but even if you only have 10 to 15 minutes a day, that's enough to make progress. The secret is to make it a habit. Whether you're walking, cooking, or relaxing, listen to something in English. Over time, you'll notice that words and sentences start to make sense without you having to think about them. And here's another important tip. Don't worry if you don't understand everything. It's okay. Learning a new language is a journey. Even if you only understand 50% of what you hear today, that's already amazing progress. Next time, you'll understand 60%, then 70%, and so on. It's all about small steps. Celebrate every improvement, no matter how small. So, here's your challenge. Find a podcast, song, or video in English that you enjoy and listen to it every day. Use the techniques we talked about. Active listening, shadowing, and listening to slow audio. You'll be amazed at how quickly your understanding of English improves. Chapter 4. Speak Without Fear Welcome back! You've now discovered the power of reading and listening to improve your English. But what's next? The part that most learners find the hardest, speaking. Yes. Speaking English can feel a little scary at first, but don't worry. By the end of this chapter, you'll know exactly how to start speaking with confidence. Let me share something with you. Speaking is where the magic happens. It's the moment when all the reading and listening you've done starts to come together. But here's the thing. You don't have to be perfect to speak English. You just have to be brave enough to try. When I first started learning English, I was afraid to speak. I thought people would laugh at my mistakes or that they wouldn't understand me. But then I realized something important. Everyone makes mistakes when they're learning. It's normal. And the best way to get better at speaking is to make those mistakes and learn from them. So, if you're feeling nervous about speaking English, take a deep breath. You're not alone, and it's totally okay to make mistakes. 
let me introduce you to a powerful technique that helped me shadowing. Yes, we've already talked about shadowing for reading and listening, but it's also an amazing way to practice speaking. Here's how it works. Find a video or audio in English, listen to a sentence, and then repeat it aloud. Try to match the speaker's tone, speed, and pronunciation as closely as possible. At first, it might feel a bit challenging, but with practice, you'll notice that your speaking becomes smoother and more natural. Here's a great tip. Start with short phrases or sentences. Don't try to speak in long, complicated sentences right away. Keep it simple. For example, you can start by practicing common phrases like, how are you? Or, what's your name? As you get more comfortable, you can move on to longer sentences. The key is to start small and build your confidence step by step. To have another language is to possess a second soul. These words from Charlemagne remind us that learning to speak a new language is like unlocking a new part of yourself. When you speak English, you're not just learning words. You're learning to express yourself in a whole new way. Isn't that exciting? Another technique that worked for me is recording yourself. Yes, it might feel strange at first, but it's a fantastic way to improve. Pick a topic, maybe something simple like describing your day, and record yourself speaking about it in English. Then listen to the recording and see how you sound. Are there any words you found difficult to pronounce? Did your sentences flow smoothly? By listening to yourself, you'll become more aware of what you need to work on and you'll see your progress over time. And here's an important reminder. You don't need to speak fast. Many learners think that speaking quickly makes them sound more fluent, but that's not true. What really matters is speaking clearly. Take your time, think about what you want to say, and speak slowly. Clarity is more important than speed. As you gain confidence, your speaking speed will naturally improve. Now, let's talk about finding someone to practice with. Having a speaking partner is one of the best ways to improve your speaking skills. It could be a friend, a teacher, or even someone online. The key is to have regular conversations in English. You don't need to talk for hours. Just 10 to 15 minutes of practice each day can make a huge difference. And remember, the goal isn't to be perfect. The goal is to practice and improve a little every day. If you don't have anyone to practice with, don't worry. You can still practice by talking to yourself. Yes, you heard that right. Talk to yourself in English. Describe what you're doing as you go about your day. For example, if you're making breakfast, you can say, I'm making coffee or I'm cutting the bread. This simple practice helps you get used to forming sentences in English and it's a great way to improve your speaking without any pressure. Confidence is the most important part of speaking English. Even if you don't know all the words or if your grammar isn't perfect, speak with confidence. 
believe in yourself, and trust that you are getting better with every word you say. Confidence is what makes you sound fluent, even if you're still learning. And remember, every time you speak, you're improving. Here's a challenge for you. Find a simple English podcast or video, like the ones I've uploaded on my YouTube channel, and try shadowing it. Then try recording yourself saying a few sentences. Finally, practice speaking those sentences out loud throughout the day. By doing this regularly, you'll see a big improvement in your speaking skills. Chapter 5, Write Your Way to Fluency. Welcome back. You're doing an amazing job so far. Reading, listening, and speaking are powerful ways to learn English. Now, let's talk about another secret that will help you reach the next level, writing. You might be thinking, why is writing important? I just want to speak better. Well, let me tell you a little secret. Writing helps you think more clearly, which makes you speak more fluently. When you write, you organize your thoughts, practice using new words, and build your confidence with the language. When I first started learning English, writing was something I didn't focus on much. But once I started, I realized it made a huge difference. Writing allowed me to practice what I had learned, and it helped me remember new words and phrases. Plus, it made me more confident when speaking because I knew how to express myself better. Writing is like your personal training ground for mastering English. Let's start with a simple technique that will make writing easy and fun. Journaling. This is where you write about your day, your thoughts, or anything that's on your mind. Don't worry about grammar or spelling too much. Just focus on expressing yourself in English. You could start with something like, Today, I went to the park, or I feel happy because the weather is nice. These simple sentences help you practice forming thoughts in English. Over time, your sentences will get longer and you'll feel more comfortable writing about different topics. The pen is the tongue of the mind. This quote by Miguel de Cervantes, the famous Spanish author of Don Quixote, perfectly describes why writing is so powerful. When you write, you're not just practicing words, you're practicing how to think in English. Writing helps you organize your thoughts, and when your thoughts are clear, your speech becomes clearer, too. Here's another technique that I found super helpful, vocabulary writing. Every time you learn a new word, try writing a sentence using that word. This helps you remember the word better and see how it fits in a sentence. For example, if you learn the word beautiful, you could write, the sky is beautiful today. This simple practice reinforces your vocabulary and helps you feel more comfortable using new words when you speak or write. You can also challenge yourself by writing short stories. It doesn't have to be complicated. Just pick a simple topic like my favorite food or a day at the beach. Write a few sentences or a paragraph. Writing stories is 
fun because it allows you to use your imagination while practicing English. Plus, when you write stories, you're practicing both your vocabulary and grammar in a way that's creative and enjoyable. Now here's a really cool trick that helped me improve my writing. Reading what you wrote out loud. After you write something, read it aloud to yourself. This helps you hear how your sentences sound and makes it easier to spot mistakes. Plus, it gives you more practice speaking English. By reading your writing out loud, you're practicing both your writing and speaking at the same time. Don't forget, writing is also a great way to practice grammar. When you write, you can focus on forming correct sentences, using the right tenses, and making sure your words fit together. But don't worry too much about making everything perfect right away. The more you write, the more natural it will become. Just like speaking, writing takes practice. Start small and build up from there. Here's a little challenge for you. Try to write something in English every day. It could be a sentence, a paragraph, or even just a list of new words you learned. The important thing is to make writing a daily habit. You'll be surprised how quickly your writing improves and it will also help your speaking and thinking in English. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. This quote from Robert Collier reminds us that progress comes from small, consistent actions. Whether it's reading, listening, speaking, or writing, the key is to practice a little bit every day. Over time, all those small efforts will add up and you'll see big improvements in your English skills. I've also uploaded podcasts on my YouTube channel that focus on writing techniques and vocabulary building. Be sure to check them out. These will give you more tips and ideas on how to improve your writing and make it an enjoyable part of your English learning journey. So, here's your writing challenge. Write a short journal entry today. It could be about anything. Your favorite food, something fun you did, or how you're feeling. Write it in English and don't worry about mistakes. Then, read it out loud to yourself. This practice will help you improve both your writing and speaking skills. Chapter 6. Practice Every Day, The Key to Success. Welcome back. You've been making amazing progress reading, listening, speaking, and writing. Now, we're going to talk about the real secret that ties everything together. Daily practice. Yes, the key to mastering English or anything in life is practicing every single day. Even if it's just a little bit, consistent practice is what makes all the difference. When I started learning English, I thought that practicing once a week would be enough. But soon, I realized that if I wanted to get better quickly, I had to practice every day. You don't need to practice for hours. Just 10 to 15 minutes a day can bring huge improvements over time. The secret is consistency. Small steps every day lead to big results. Think of learning English like planting a tree. You don't see it grow overnight, 
but with a little water and sunshine each day, it gets bigger and stronger. Your practice is like watering the tree. It helps your skills grow bit by bit. One day, you'll look back and realize how much progress you've made. Let's talk about how to build a daily practice routine. Here's a simple way to do it. Mix up your skills. On some days, focus on reading. On other days, practice speaking, listening, or writing. You don't have to do everything at once, but try to practice at least one skill every day. This keeps your learning balanced and fun. Here's a great tip. Set small goals for each day. For example, you could decide to read one page of an English book, listen to a short podcast, or write a simple sentence. These small goals are easy to reach and help you feel accomplished. The more you achieve these goals, the more motivated you'll be to keep practicing. Now, let's talk about how to make practice part of your daily routine. You don't have to set aside big chunks of time. You can practice while you're doing other things. For example, you can listen to an English podcast while cooking, cleaning, or walking. This way, you're improving your listening skills without needing extra time. If you like watching videos, use that to your advantage. Watch something in English every day, even if it's just a few minutes. You can find videos on topics you enjoy, whether it's cooking, sports, or travel. The key is to surround yourself with English as much as possible. Success is the sum of small efforts, repeated day in and day out. This quote from Robert Collier reminds us that it's not about how much you practice in one day, but how often you practice over time. Even if you feel like you're not making much progress today, remember that each small effort brings you closer to your goal. Every word you learn, every sentence you write, and every conversation you have adds up over time. One of the most powerful ways to practice is by combining the skills you've learned. For example, after listening to an English podcast, try writing a short summary of what you heard. Then, read that summary aloud to practice your speaking and pronunciation. This helps you improve multiple skills at the same time. Now, let me share another secret. Don't worry about mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes when you practice. In fact, mistakes are part of the learning process. Every mistake you make is a step toward getting better. When I was learning English, I made plenty of mistakes, but each one taught me something new. So don't be afraid to try, even if you're not perfect yet. The more you practice, the better you'll become. Here's something else that will help you. Keep track of your progress. Write down what you practice each day and how it went. You could keep a journal or use a notebook. This helps you see how far you've come and it's a great way to stay motivated. Plus, it's fun to look back and see how much you've improved over time. If you're looking for more ways to practice, don't forget to check out my YouTube channel. I've uploaded podcasts that can help you with listening, speaking, reading, and writing. 
These podcasts are designed to be simple and fun, so you can practice your English in a way that works for you. Here's your challenge for today. Set a small goal for your practice. It could be reading one page, listening to a podcast, or writing a short sentence. Then stick with it for a week. By the end of the week, you'll see just how much progress you've made with daily practice. And remember, the most important thing is consistency. Keep practicing every day, no matter how small the effort. Chapter 7 My Ultimate Secret to Mastering English. Welcome to the final chapter. You've made it this far, and I'm so proud of the progress you've already made. We've covered reading, listening, speaking, writing, and daily practice. Now, it's time to reveal the ultimate secret to mastering English. It's a secret that goes beyond any technique, tool, or strategy. Are you ready for it? The secret is confidence and persistence. Yes, that's it. The true key to mastering English is believing in yourself and never giving up. You don't need to know every word or grammar rule. You don't need to speak perfectly. What you need is the confidence to keep going, to push through the challenges, to embrace your mistakes, and to keep practicing no matter what. Let me tell you a little story. When I was learning English, I used to get frustrated. I felt like I wasn't improving fast enough and I worried that I'd never be fluent. But then, one day, I realized something important. Every mistake I made was a step forward, not a step back. I learned to embrace those mistakes and use them as learning opportunities. That's when everything changed. Instead of focusing on what I didn't know, I started to celebrate what I had already learned. I felt more confident, and that confidence helped me speak and practice more. You see, confidence is the key that unlocks everything else. When you believe in yourself, you'll take more risks, speak more often, and practice without worrying about being perfect. You'll realize that Mistakes are not failures, they're lessons. The more confident you are, the more progress you'll make. But confidence alone isn't enough. You also need persistence. This means never giving up, even when things get tough. Learning a new language is like climbing a mountain. There will be days when it feels hard, when you don't see immediate progress. But if you keep climbing, keep practicing, and keep pushing yourself, you'll eventually reach the top. It always seems impossible until it's done. This powerful quote from Nelson Mandela reminds us that no matter how difficult something may seem, it's possible if you keep going. And that's the secret to mastering English. Never giving up. You might not feel fluent today or tomorrow, but with persistence, you'll get there. Each day you practice, you're one step closer to fluency. Here's another important tip. Celebrate your progress. Too often, we focus on what we still need to learn, and we forget to appreciate how far we've come. Take a moment to look back at your journey. 
Think about where you started and how much you've already learned. Maybe now you can understand English conversations better. Maybe you've learned new vocabulary, or maybe you're able to write in English more confidently. These are all wins, and they deserve to be celebrated. You don't have to wait until you're fluent to feel proud. Every step, no matter how small, is progress. So, whenever you feel like you're stuck or not improving fast enough, remind yourself of all the things you've already achieved. Be proud of your progress because you're doing amazing. And here's another secret. Enjoy the journey. Learning English isn't just about reaching the destination of fluency. It's about the experiences you gain along the way. You're opening doors to new cultures, meeting people from different backgrounds, and discovering new ways to express yourself. Enjoy the process of learning, have fun with it, make mistakes, laugh at them, and keep going. The more you enjoy the journey, the easier it becomes. Now, as you move forward, remember this. You already have everything you need to succeed. You've learned powerful techniques, reading, listening, speaking, writing, and practicing daily. You've built a strong foundation. The only thing left is to keep going with confidence and persistence. Here's a final challenge for you. Set a big goal for yourself. Maybe it's having a conversation in English with a native speaker, reading a full book in English, or even traveling to an English-speaking country. Whatever your goal is, write it down and start working toward it step by step. With confidence and persistence, you'll achieve it. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. This quote from Theodore Roosevelt perfectly sums up everything we've talked about. Believe in yourself, keep practicing, and never give up. That's the ultimate secret to mastering English. You've come so far already, and I know you're going to go even further. Keep using the techniques we've discussed, stay confident, and be persistent. And don't forget, you're not alone on this journey. I'm here with you. And there are so many resources like the podcasts I've uploaded that you can use to keep improving. Thank you for joining me on this journey. And I can't wait to see how far you'll go. You're ready to conquer English. And I believe in you. Now, go out there and show the world what you can do. You've got this.